It always feels like somebody's watching me. I don't know why that's just stuck in my head today. So guys, welcome back. This is Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra, your friendly neighborhood SAP Business One consultant. Thank you so much for everything again. You guys rock. I hope you're getting something out of my videos. Leave a like, tell me what videos you want me to do. And of course, check out my support me page. Um, I made this page so I don't have to ramble on about it every single time. The best things you can do for me, check out my Crystal Reports course. So crystal.battleshipcobra.com and um, you know, just like, subscribe, share. I do um, a lot of other SAP Business One specific uh, videos, but I do lots of other things too. I'm trying to, mostly I do SAP Business One. But. So guys, welcome back. We are continuing on with our decision speed framework and crystal dashboard designs series on how to get started with dashboards. So if you didn't see the last video, we talked about the decision speed framework from the book, The Performance Manager by IBM. And um, so this decision speed framework, it goes through your performance, which is what is happening, measuring and monitoring, that is oh, how are we doing, what's going on. It goes through planning, so the planning is what should we be doing? And then it goes through analysis. So why did this happen and how does it relate to everything else that's going on? You have the decision areas, that's finance, sales, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then you have within those specific areas, the sub areas. So that's like sales results and all those sub areas listed. So we talked about GOMEDS which is my slangy term for goals, metrics, and dimensions. So a goal is obviously a goal, it's a target. A metric is something you can measure that moves you towards your goals, and a dimension is some aspect of fragmentation that you're gonna to use to divide resources or do some allocation of capital, etc. which those are basically the same thing. And uh, so that's something like uh, sales employees, uh, offices, territories, departments, etc. things like that. So I'm gonna go boop and show you the sales results. You can pause it, take a look, and that's what we were working on. We looked at the basics of Crystal Dashboard Design, just how the user interface looked and why it used to be called Excelsius. So obviously Excel was in the name because it uses Microsoft Excel and it's literally built in. Now it's called SAP Crystal Dashboard Design and you do not need to know any coding or anything special in terms of, well you need to know something special, but you don't need to know any sort of uh, coding languages, etc. You can literally just do drag and drop and today I'm gonna to show you a lot more with specific examples from the sales results decision sub area. Decision sub area, sub area, sub decision, sub decision area, whatever, you know what I mean. So within the sales decision area, you're going to have sales results. And we're going to talk more specifically about all the GOMEDs, goals, metrics, and dimensions within that area. So that's the purpose of this video. Well, before I get started, I wanted to ask you guys, do you even BJJ? Now you might know I'm a fan of the Joe Rogan experience. I'm also a gigantic fan of UFC and MMA in general. But I wanted to talk about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and why you should do it for guys and for girls of any age, whether you're in shape or you're not in shape. It has been probably the single most vehicle for human development, as Rogan would say. Um, I have encountered, I've been doing it for about five years. I've focused primarily on no gi grappling. That's, uh, if you look it up, no gi is uh, no gi. You don't wear the pajamas is the derogatory term. You don't wear a gi, you don't wear a uniform. But I'm getting more into the gi stuff too and I love it, it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, it just teaches you that you can push through hard things 
you can continue, you're gonna get into some bad spots, but you can stay calm and you can focus on it. It's amazing. It's, I call it combat yoga and it's really engaging and people call it a chess match. I guess you can call it a chess match more with the gi. Um, but in, in even no gi, I'd consider it a chess match. The whole thing is a chess match, really. I mean, you're trying to um, choke somebody or submit them and it seems like maybe it would be violent or something, but you've never met more cool people. I mean, you get out this energy that you can't get out anywhere else. You get a great workout in. You, you know, you'll think about it all day. You look forward to doing it. You'll have a lot of uh, friendly social encounters. Again, you, you think that trying to choke somebody or break somebody's arm would um, really uh, be a negative thing, but you can't understand that uh, when you've sparred with somebody, you really understand them. You know when they're, you know, it's kind of like golf times a million. I mean, you play golf and see how somebody reacts to putting a dumbass little ball around. Um, or you can see if somebody cracks. When you choke them, you can see if they make excuses. You can see how physically uh, fit they are. They can't hide anything. You prove yourself every day. You can't make excuses and you have to just put your ego in your pocket or leave it at the door or whatever and uh, just continue. It's been absolutely amazing. It's an amazing journey. I love it. Um, <clears throat> my four-year-old son, Max, is doing it and he loves it too. You know, and on top of that, you really can learn to defend yourself. Um, you know, control distance, control the damage is a Gracie principle, but um, it's true. I mean, most fights will end up on the ground and uh, if somebody has never done any grappling, they're, uh, they're not even in your universe. After six months, if somebody tried to take you down, it would be comical. Even a larger opponent, BJJ is designed to, um, to control larger, larger opponents. So I just wanted to say that it's something that I really personally believe in. Check out Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and don't make excuses. Just go, do what you can do. You're gonna get choked out. Keep doing it. Don't worry about your fitness level. It doesn't matter. Just keep doing it. Just start. It doesn't matter if you're older. I mean, I'm 30 plus and um, I still love to do it. It's kept me in shape and it's something I don't need to go to a gym and think, oh, I'm gonna lift some boring, boring weights. Um, I get to go and I get to learn more ways to strangle people. It seems kind of weird, I guess, but to me, and to everybody else that does jiu-jitsu, they love it. So if you love jiu-jitsu, comment below. Um, if you're part of my jiu-jitsu family, you see somebody wearing a jiu-jitsu t-shirt or something, you just know that guy is cool because you can't not be cool and continue to do it. You'll get, you just your ego won't be able to take it. So um, do it. Your local gyms will usually have a couple, uh, like a week trial. So give, give it a try, I really recommend it. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled programming. So what's the point of any of these dashboards, you might ask me, even if you have some metrics and stuff? Well, the performance manager explains that the finance module is the primary module of your business, and I would really have to agree. If you have no cash, you really don't have anything. So whether or not you like it, profit is the point of a business and you need to be making money in order to stay alive. So the purpose of measuring any of these specific decision areas is to figure out how it ties back to your financial performance. So we're going to be able to look into those different areas and generate what they call sweet spots, which are the biggest levers or levers in your business that are going to cause the largest changes in your financial statements. And then once you've kind of worked on these metrics and these GOMEDs a little bit, you are going to understand how everything links together and you'll be able to create an executive dashboard that allows you to look at particular areas and look at variances and get uh, a picture and a story of what your business is doing and why. So again, if you look at the decision speed framework, it's built on top of each other. You look at the source data, you measure it, you do your planning, and then you analyze it all so it ties back to your finances. So that's the purpose of what we're gonna do today. And again, we're gonna start with the sales uh, decision area because everybody kind of understands sales and we're gonna continue with that. And I'm gonna show you more of Crystal Dashboard Design. Always time for coffee.
Okay, so we're back in Crystal Dashboard Design, or SAP Crystal Dashboard Design. And um, you can see here a lot of stuff, but let's just start with a preview. So we're always trying to link these things together, right? <clears throat> so again, these go meds, goals, metrics, dimensions. And then, of course, we have this chart, so we'll get down there in a minute. Goals, so these are your targets. So new customer sales, how many new customers and what are the sales are we doing? Sales growth, obviously this is a growth in sales, usually year over year, but can be via different dimensions. And sales order dollar value. So this is how much sales orders we have, maybe year to date, maybe by different locations. So the goals are targets, and um, what you can do is set the, the metrics to support the goals. I mean, the metrics do support the goals. So you'll be seeing how the metrics drive these goals, and these goals would ultimately be uh, what drives profitability and fundamentally your financial performance. So you can say average sales per order. Is that increasing or decreasing? Average units per order credit balance, credit limit, like how much is your uh, credit utilization, how much credit do you have out of there, are customers buying less, are they using your credit, customer number, last customer count, new customer count, new product sales, that's dollar value, sales order counts, and units ordered. So these are all from the performance manager. You don't have to use every single one, but they give you a lot of these for all of the different decision sub areas. Sub-decision areas. Sub-decision areas, when I'll, I'll figure out what I'm going to use for that. So again, these would all drive these things. So if you can see these little, uh, these areas are going to become what, what your sweet spots are, the lever, le levers that will drive your goal. So is the credit balance of customers going up or down? Is the average sales per order going up or down? That's going to drive all these things. Are you getting enough new customers? Is that going to drive your customer sales? And all these various things are going to go and drive the metrics through to the goals. And again, the goals are your targets and what you can measure and use in your decision cycle. The dimensions are how you're going to split everything up and divide everything into how are you going to make decisions. So if you look at something like this, you have customer industry. So are you should you focus on retail? Should you focus on wholesale? Should you focus on pharmaceutical, automotive? Um, however you want to divide those dimensions, uh, that's what the that's what you're going to do. So you might not have anything right now. You might just have customers, but you want to get maybe more specific because you can say, do we spend more money advertising or uh, on our sales efforts to uh, pharmaceuticals? or do we do more to our retail customers, wholesale, et cetera, it really depends on your business. Customer location, so um, are we focusing on North America? Are we focusing on South America? Are we focusing on Europe? Are we focusing in China? Where are our customers? So this helps us to say, where do we spend and allocate our resources, product, brand names, we got uh, product lines, we have specific products, it all depends on your business, but that dimension, so you can say are there new customers in X product lines, what's the trends in those product lines, um, you'll have sales channels, are we driving sales through our website, are we doing most of it through a trade show? Are we doing most of it by phone calls, cold calls, email blasts? I hate that. Um, are people walking into your store? Are, is it word of mouth? How are you going to track that? Um, so those are your channels. Sales region. So this is kind of your territory. Is this Bob in Kansas? Is he doing great? Is it, uh, you know, is this lower mainland British Columbia, Canada? Is, is, what region do we want to invest in? Do you want to divide it that way? Are you huge and you want to divide into very specific areas? Or are you a little bit smaller and you want to just say maybe BC, Alberta? Or is this, maybe you just work in BC and it's, you know, northern BC, southern BC, or Vancouver Island, BC. Etc. You know, apply it to your own area, and then of course the date range. So the date range is always a great dimension. So that's year, last year, this year, etc. You know how the date range works. 
So we have those goals, metrics, and dimensions, and then we want to visualize them. So we have the data here, and we're going to say new customer sales, and this is all just made up, okay? I just made this as an example, and you're going to see new customer sales, dollars, and then there's this, sales growth in percentage, and this is all real time. So if your system can't do this, uh, you need to be worried a little bit because you might need to upgrade your system. Again, I use SAP Business One. It's a small and medium-sized ERP system. So it's a business management system. We commonly convert people from QuickBooks, Simply Accounting, or other kind of homebrew systems that are starting to break or just don't have good foreign exchange handling or inventory uh, tracking and management and it's a, an amazing platform so if your system can't do any of these metrics uh, look into SAP Business One or just contact me and we'll, I'll get you uh, directed to get set up it's something that you can start with uh, you know five users or less it's not something you have to be a multi-million dollar company well I mean you you could be a small business, be multi-million dollar. I mean, you don't have to have tens of millions of dollars in sales in order to look at an ERP. Why not set yourself up for success right now? And this Crystal Dashboard Design is actually built right into it, so that's just a bonus. So we're looking at this, sales orders, dollar values. I made this little button just randomized, just frankly, it's fun, so you can hear do 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 and um, this just integrates it real time. If you were looking at your own data, you could push refresh and you can have all sorts of things. This is just a uh, what we call a KPI or key performance indicator. So this is showing you not much dimensionally. It can be dimensional. This is really just like for the business, but you can divide these down more specifically. As a bonus with, um, <clears throat> with that book, uh, the performance manager, you're gonna get uh, a lot of quotes and I like the little quotes that they do at the bottom of the page. So you can see here, planning is pointless if it isn't translated into action plans that are actually delivered and analyzed. At the same time, there's no point in automating your sales force if you can't direct them towards achieving the relevant goals. It's from uh, Vincent Meunier. And um, so stuff like that, I mean, it it seems simple, but it's really true. I don't, I just don't, you need to reinforce it. I feel like people are uh, running their business by the seat of the pants or they're doing an autopsy style analysis after the fact. They're not doing a true decision cycle and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Charts. So boom, you got some re you got some cool stuff here. So again, I did this pretty quickly. So this is average sales per order and this is for memory. RAM. Memory is RAM. <laughs> uh, if you know the... Uh, IT crowd, you would know what that is. So this is just kind of a little inside joke. But anyways, this is your product lines or whatever, whatever dimension I did this by product line. So you can see the spark line it is is average sales per order growing over time, or or is it falling? RAM, gosh, it's it's falling. Processors, it's going pretty good. Maybe it's a little seasonal. And um, then we have this cool what if analysis bar. So this is a very simple one, but we're gonna say. What if we adjusted our future outlook forecast? Two, six, ten. So obviously, once you get to 25%, it's pretty flat. But um, you can see how cool this is, and how you can build these uh, build these what if analysis right in real time, and you can just change these as you go. You can say, you know, a lot of the financial things. It's very cool because you can say, what if we increased? Uh, what if we decreased our inventory by X amount? How much working capital would that free up and stuff like that? So I love these. Um, what if analysis? This is just a little bar I added as a percentage of the year. So you can see I could put numbers on this, but you could just see that it, it's just you know we're just under maybe 50 percent. And then I have some other metrics year to date. So we'll say new customers. And you can say versus last year, the gray bar can be last year. This point here can be maybe this month. And then this can be total. So wow, we're doing great. Sales order dollar value, the gray bar is last year again. The bar is this year. And then that uh, line there to compare could be uh, for this month alone. And units ordered, same thing. So you could put these up there really nicely, metrics unit uh, year to date. And this gives you the trend analysis here. So customers were up, uh, sales orders. Uh, we're still below last year. That's not good. So we need to drive more sales orders and units orders. Are, unit orders are up. So I don't know really how that works. But um, this is uh, charts and graphs, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. But this is one way of just taking these metrics and putting them in here. So you can think this is uh, this is mostly time based. You have some product line division here, and then you're driving these metrics, which ultimately will track your goals. 
Last thing in this example for the dimensions is uh, is is sales re or cus more customer location or sales region if they correlate together. So you're gonna have customer location. So you're seeing here in the heat map, you're doing a lot. Looks like Alberta and Ontario, and um, you can click these and see year to date sales in Alberta. Okay, you're meeting your sales goals and your customer goals too. That's great. Ontario, it's looking good. You know, you're almost there for your sales goals and you're only part way through the year. Got Quebec, none of it. Yeah, you guys are none of it. Slacking. So maybe you're not even targeting targeting none of it. Uh, Yukon Territory, Saskatchewan, etc. So you can click these and it, it's kind of fun. So you got these little ga uh, gauges and everything and you can drive those in there based on these dimensions. So how quick was this? I mean, you're just you know, literally doing these things, it's very simple to do when you have the data and um, you can just write your queries and do your things like that and um, it'll allow you to summarize this very quickly just to understand and you can see how you're using the GOMEDS in order to reinforce uh, what you're actually doing and the decisions that you're making giving you some business intelligence and driving you towards your goals. So when you're looking at these GOMEDS um, you're going to always want to think of the various ways in which it relates to other parts of your business too. So you want to say, uh, how does it tie back to your financials? This is the so what? Uh, why is it important? Again, fundamentally you want to link everything back to your financials. Then you want to look at the who. Who is involved? Who is responsible? How does this tie into your functions and roles within your business? And this helps you to allocate your time and resources and become more profitable. And then you want to look at the where, when, and how. How does this tie back to your business processes? So, you know, when you're going to look at these different dimensions, this is going to give you very uh, strategic, a strategic overview of how your business is doing, but also tactical ways of implementing uh, these different changes in order to improve what you're doing as a business. You will then eventually tie everything back to an executive dashboard and this executive dashboard will have you know summarized financial targets but then it'll also have the different areas and metrics you've selected uh, goals, uh, metrics and dimensions you've selected in order to give you a story. And these stories will be able to highlight why. And this is the analysis of why things are happening rather than having this autopsy of, oh geez, you know, it's the end of the year and we, we performed poorly, but during the year we didn't barely even look at it. We were just working on our day-to-day -day stuff by the seat of our pants, but we didn't make any decisions and we didn't really try to do anything better and so, you know, again, it's an autopsy style look at your business, not an active management decision cycle where you can measure and monitor, do your planning and do your analysis and then reforecast. So this all feeds back into your decision cycle, which is plan, measure, reforecast and analyze. And this can go round and round so you see what's happening, you say, why are we doing this? And you can set your goals and then you'll have to reforecast your goals too to make sure that you're gonna meet them. So you're gonna have a decision uh, cycle and all of this information feeds into that. So your decision cycle could be a year and then you know at the end of the year, you're kinda like, oh, well, we did crappy. And then let's change for next year and then you put some, some plans into place. You could do it quarterly, you could do it monthly for specific things. And you could do uh, maybe a quarterly review dashboard that will tell you how you perform and you can talk to the company about it and you can say this is something that we need to change. How are we going to do it? How are we going to change it? And what metrics are we going to use to measure? What sweet spots are we going to use? Those are metrics to, um, to push those targets and you can make changes on the fly. So this is what I'm talking about being more intelligent. A business is more intelligent when they run this way. And likely this is why you're wanting to get to, um, to getting your dashboards up and running. You're running your business, you're doing good. You have more time now freed up to work on your business and, and instead of in your business. And this is why you're here to make dashboards. So pick an area, say, how does X 
metric relate to Y goal, and you'll eventually start to see how more X's relate to your goals, and then the dimensions you can use. I think I screwed up my X, Y's, and Z's. But you can link all these things together. You'll see one area, you'll say, well, this metric is good, but maybe I wanna explain it with another area. And then you'll see all these different things. Some of them don't change. Some of them might seem more important now, but are uh, less consequential. But then you can get a set of mapping going. And with these maps, you're gonna make better dashboards. With better dashboards, you're gonna make better decisions. With better decisions, you're gonna make more money. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. It's been an absolute pleasure. I could talk about this for hours and I'm just really talking to a camera right now. But uh, again, my name is Mike Taylor, your friendly SAP Business One consultant, friendly neighborhood consultant. And uh, you can support me if you like these videos, supportme.battleshipcobra.com. Link is in the description below. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Subscribe, like, comment. Let me know what other videos you want or what areas you want me to focus on or if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Have a great day.